Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a magnetic excursion update Wednesday, December 10th. Around 7.45 p.m. Mountain Time 2025, G2 geomagnetic storm is happening now. The CMEs arrive late, and they are weak, but the BZ has shifted all the way south, and that is lighting up the aurora in the northern latitudes. We've got a lot to talk about, so keep calm. It's boom time. The polar vortex is sending a wrecking ball of cold air to the U.S., the cold blast could be relatively short-lived with a return to more typical wintry temperatures by late December. But here's the 6 to 10-day day temperature outlook, and the northeast is going to be well below normal, while the west will be basking in the sunshine. Here is the current thermodynamics, and you can see that lobe of cool air here. Here's tonight. It's going to dip all the way down the freeze line into the southeast tomorrow. It's going to dip even deeper as an extremely cold plume starts to push its way into the U.S. by the weekend. Minus 24 for North Dakota, minus 25, say it ain't soda, in Minnesota. And here will be the weekend, Saturday, Sunday. Fun day there, minus 30 for Minnesota and North Dakota. And that's the actual temperature. Wind chills will be minus 40 or minus 50, depending on the speed of the winds. And that chill is going to dip all the way into Wisconsin here by the end of the weekend, minus 23 for Wisconsin. And the cold now moves all the way down to the Gulf Coast by early next week. And the next iguana apocalypse may be upon us. Minneapolis and St. Paul declare snow emergencies after the winter storm. Both Minneapolis and St. Paul declared snow emergencies on Wednesday. Both emergencies will take effect Wednesday night. Vehicles parked on the wrong streets at the wrong times could face tickets and towing. Well, how much snow fell in Minnesota already on Tuesday's winter storm? Well, more than a half a foot. Eight inches in Tamarack, eight inches in Bijou, Gonvick, Thief, River Falls, Carlstad, and Little Falls. 7.8 in Fertile, 7.5 in Warren. You get the picture. St. Paul even picked up 6.9. Coon Rapids, 7.2. Rivers flood, roads are swamped, communities are evacuated as an atmospheric river pounds eastern Washington. Let's see what Coma has to say. Look, the impact on Washingtonians is significant now, and it's going to be significant in the coming days, and that is an understatement. Washington Governor Bob Ferguson announcing a statewide emergency declaration in response to extreme flooding. Good afternoon, I'm Steve Solis. Ferguson says the next few days will be critical and the state is doing everything possible to help those impacted. Today's declaration will seek federal funding to cover the response. The governor has also activated the National Guard for additional support. Several Let's take a look at some of the photos of the flooding there. You can see houses are under, houses, cars underwater, and even gas stations, and even mini-marts. Holy macaroni. A quick look at Tornado HQ, and you can see that the precipitation is moderating right now, but it will increase. There is snow and rain moving across the East Coast, and right behind it, another clipper with more snow and lake effect as another front moves through the center of the country. And here is the full forecast, shall we? We are tracking an atmospheric river in the northwest U.S. and clipper with winter weather for the northeast. A prolonged atmospheric river will continue to bring gusty winds, heavy rain, which may lead to urban and river flooding and already has, with possible landslides. Heavy intermontane snow over the Pacific Northwest and into the northern Rockies through Thursday with a clipper crossing the Great Lakes and the northeast into Thursday with areas of moderate to heavy snow and mixed wintry precipitation. Full forecast coming right now. And let's walk the snow through, shall we? Here we go. Here is your Thursday into Friday morning. And you can see most of the snow is going to be falling in the northeast and the Pacific Northwest with isolated four feet or more here in northern Washington. Friday into the weekend, we see a strip of snow moving across the U.S. through Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio, or Iowa. Well, even Ohio and West Virginia are going to be picking up some significant uh, totals in the high elevations here. Let's walk the weekend through Saturday and into Sunday. There you go. 
A little bit more snow for Montana. And then next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and the beginning of next weekend, snow will be now dipping down into the Sierras and hopefully hit the four corners here by the end of the weekend. Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Yes! We could be picking up 16 inches or more in this model. And that nor'easter we were talking about, uh, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day is showing back up on the models with a huge swath of 16 to 32 inches of snow for the Appalachians. Uh, so we're going to keep close eye on these models as they continue to repeat. I say repeat. We could be forecasting this early nor'easter. Well, it could be some of the earliest forecasting of this storm now that it's now showing up two days in a row. So buckle up, Buttercup. Could be some amazing things happening as Christmas arrives. And this is going to be your white Christmas forecast as of today through December 25th. Japan issues an advisory for a possible mega quake following the 7.5 magnitude trembler. This is bad news. Japan has issued a mega quake advisory Tuesday after the 7.5 earthquake struck off the eastern coast of Amurai the northernmost prefecture in Japan's main island of Honshu, and just south of the northern island of Hokkaido. Damage from the quake was modest. 34 mostly mild injuries and some damage to roads and buildings. Officials say the advisory is not a prediction, and the probability of a magnitude 8 or greater is just 1%. But there's hope that the advisory will serve as a wake-up call for a quake that could have devastation could have the devastation of the 2011 disaster that killed nearly 20,000 people and destroyed Fukushima, a nuclear power plant. Seismic update. No quakes of note. Well, a few. A 5.5 in Colombia. Other than that, very low level activity worldwide. Japan still rocking with a 5.7 aftershock there. A colorful fireball, probably one of the Geminids seen across six states, including Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus. Saltwater Recon captured the massive fireballs. It flashed across the Texas sky Tuesday night. And we do have some video of the supposed bolide. There she glows. Yes, indeedy. All right, that wasn't that exciting. How the heck do we get out of here? All righty then. Yeah, and there is more footage there. Dash cam footage from Dallas shows the fireball streaking across the sky. And check out Jason McNamara. He caught tonight's meteor on his dash cam. Yeah, it's a lot of crappy footage, I know. <laughs> but what are you going to do? Space weather, the BZ currently pointing south. And a moderate G2 geomagnetic storm is in effect until 3 o'clock UTC. And there we can see the aurora glowing. Let's refresh this and see if there's any change. Not much. Here you can see the arrival of the CME right here. Where we see a jump in speed, a little jump in density, the phi angle shifting, uh, and the BZ shifting way south. As long as it stays south, we'll be in geomagnetic storm overnight. So, chance for Aurora, we're currently at KP6+. Plus, and we're still there. Okay, like swimwear. Uh, we also have the accentuating factor of this massive coronal hole, which will be coupling with us anytime now, and maybe get a one-two punch here with G2 geomagnetic storming occurring for days. Bad news if you live in Michigan. A new map shows where PFAS are contaminating Michigan fish, and it's all over the state. The red areas do not eat. The yellow areas, very questionable, and that is most of the state of Michigan. The map is interactive. You can blow it up, and it changes all the time as new data comes in. And if you live in any of these red areas and you're fishing in these waterways, do not eat the fish unless you want to die of cancer. Where did Indonesia's hobbits go? We're talking about the smallest hominids known right now, Homo floriensis. There may be smaller ones, but these hominids were just 1.1 meters tall. They lived in caves, and they made the same artifacts as all native cultures did. Uh, lit fires, hunted, and farmed 150 to 61,000 years ago. 
Uh, humanity lost one of the surviving hominid cousins, Homo floriensis, known as the Hobbit, and a new paper coming out December 8th, just two days ago, explains why they're missing. The onset of summer, aridification, and the decline of Homo floriensis at Langbu, 61,000 years ago. Yeah, there was a multi-thousand year drought in Indonesia, and it knocked these little babies out. What I find fascinating is Homo floriensis hunted many elephants on this island. So not only were the people small, the elephants were tiny as well. Pretty fascinating science there. More breakthroughs. Everything keeps getting older. Archaeologists find the earliest known fire made by humans, and it predates the oldest fire by 340,000 years. Yeah, this is incredible. A field in eastern England has revealed evidence of the earliest known instance of human creating a controlled fire. A significant find, archaeologists say, illuminates a dramatic turning point in human history. This is a 400,000-year-old site where we have the earliest evidence of making fire, not just in Britain or Europe, but in fact, anywhere in the world, said Nick Ashton, curator of Paleolithic Collections at the British Museum in a news briefing. Ashton is the senior author of a study on the Barnum site. It's the most exciting discovery of his 40-year career, he added. When and where were humans deliberately making fire and cooking food are among the biggest questions that have long stumped researchers. And now we've pushed this date back to 400,000 years. We also have wooden structures that date back even earlier than this in Zambia. And everything keeps getting older and older. The earliest evidence of making fire published on the 5th of November or published on the 4th of November of this year will be linked below. Go get it. And go get this, the great crustal shift hoax. The truth they tried to hide and we will also discuss large-scale interstellar magnetic field reversals, the, their implications and what they actually mean. This will be an eye-opening podcast and it's coming up in just a few minutes, 8 p.m., Mountain Time over at Magnetic Reversal News. And did you see gold, another all-time high today, up over another buck, almost hit $63, topping out at, just moments ago, 6287 maybe as high as 6289 Silver is going to get very scarce in the coming years, and the need for it is going to increase fourfold in just five years with data centers, electric vehicles, batteries, um, and all kind of technology that needs silver. Silver could hit over 120 by the end of next year, maybe 200, and there is no end in sight. You want to hedge your bets as inflation looms and you're missing out on your 401k as it dwindles? Switch your 401k over to precious metals and use Gold Co., the industry leader. From precious metal IRAs to direct purchases of gold, they've helped thousands of Americans diversify and protect their retirement savings. And what's better? Yeah, there are no penalties from switching uh, to, from stocks to precious metals. Request your free 2025 gold and silver kit. They won't spam you. They won't harass you. If you're interested, they will put you in the right direction. Rated A-plus by Better Business Bureau, triple A by Business Consumer Alliance, 6,000 five-plus star ratings, 2024 Best Customer Service, the INC 5000 Award recipient, six years in, the, in a row. You can trust Gold Cup. And that is a boom to knowledge. Hit the thumbs up, share this video. The most important thing you can do is subscribe tonight and help the channel grow. We love each and every one of you. Be safe. And that's a boom. And we'll see you in a minute over at Magnetic Reversal News for the great crustal shift hoax. New, new, new.